Hi lovely yogi, welcome to my channel. My name is Ethne. Welcome back if you've been here before. If you've not, welcome to it. So today's flow is going to be based around headstand. Uh, when you're ready, jump on your mat uh, or towel or blanket or whatever it is, just on the carpet. Um, we will start in a child's pose. Big toes touching, knees nice and wide. Draw that arms out in front of you. Sit your bum back towards your heels. And just soften the forehead down to the ground. Relaxing elbows and shoulders. Sway your head from side to side. Come to stillness. And start to release and deepen your breath. Letting go of any need or desire to bring any preconceived ideas for your practice today. Allow yourself to breathe and to move with calm, collected awareness. To stay present in the moment, in the action, to release attachment into the poses themselves, but to notice our stability and our grounding as we partake in the shapes. Gaining a little bit more trust within our body each and every time we step onto the mat. Can okay, you see, sink a little bit deeper inward Just feeling the breath as it arrives and it leaves your body, the temperature, the texture of that space, the feelings it invokes as we just breathe. One more here. Start to walk your hands back towards your knees. If you need to, take a little brick underneath your bottom if your knees have started to feel uncomfortable. Good, roll the shoulders backwards. Keep that steady breath. Roll the shoulders forwards. Loosening up all the way around the neck. Relax the hands and keep the breath steady. Lovely. So, interlace your fingers, take a big breath in. As we exhale, press the palms forwards, almost like a seated cat cow. Tuck your chin to chest and dome the upper back body. Inhale, rise all the way up to kneeling. Palms still facing high to sky. As you exhale, release the hand slowly and sit your bum back towards your heels. Good, inhale, hands interlace, non-dominant grip. And exhale, press the hands away, dome the upper back. Inhale, reach it high to sky, come up to kneeling. As you exhale this time, take the hands to the hips. Inhale, squeezing the shoulder blades, squeeze your butt. Slightly press the pelvis forwards as you just lift the chin. Almost like a, a variation of our ustras in a camel pose, but not going into that full space just yet. And the exhale, sit your bum back to heels. Lovely interlace fingers. And exhale, press forwards. Dome the back, drop the chin. Inhale, breathing high. And exhale, hands to waist. Tuck the toes under this time. If you feel good in the first variation, stay there. If we're going a little bit further, inhale, squeeze the elbows, tuck the tailbone, squish the butt, uh, squeeze your butt cheeks. Send the hips forwards, breathe up, 
And when you feel ready, reaching the fingertips just lightly back to the heels at the same time. Keep inviting the inhale to draw the sternum higher. And exhale, engage your abdominals. Lift back to center, hands to hips. Release the toes, exhale, bum to heels. Last time. Ooh. <laughs> inhale, interlace, non-dominant grip. Exhale, press the palms forwards. Inhale, rise to kneeling. Tucking the toes, hands to hips. Exhale. Take the variation one or two, or if we're going a little bit further, untucking the toes, press the tops of the feet firmly to the floor. Inhale to squeeze and lift, open and rise. And then reaching both hands back towards the heels at the same time. Now it's a little bit further to drop, so if you'd prefer to, you could always start with the toes tucked. And then take the pointing or come down to the tops of the feet. Wherever we're going, a sense of breath is lifting the chest upwards and sending the hips forwards. Exhale, hands to hips, Ooh, almost like a little crunch, lift back into centre. Sit the bum back towards the heels. Good ground here. Moving any bricks or any props out from underneath your bottom. Find your way oh, onto the belly. Yeah, just release the knees. Make a pillow with your forehead, uh, with your hands for your forehead. Have a sway of the hips. It should just massage into your kneecaps as well. Feels real good. Lovely jubbly. Elbows underneath the shoulders, hands facing forwards, palms down. Our sphinx pose. Squeeze the shoulder blades. Open up and broaden through the collarbones and just let the legs be almost like jelly down there. Imagining there's a piece of string in the top of the head, the crown. So instead of kind of rounding and doming downwards, press and rise without straining the neck. One more breath in. Exhale, tuck your toes under and start to lift the knees. Good. Draw the belly away from the ground. Starting to switch on your bandhas, your mula bandha pelvic floor, uddiyana bandha belly button, and the jalahandra bandha, pressing the tongue into the roof of the mouth, so creating this great lock of energy through the body. Good, and release the knees, release the chest, and keep the toes tucked. Inhale to press the heels backwards as you lift up knees, draw belly button to spine, tuck the tongue into the roof of the mouth, dome and hold. And release. Good, this time we're gonna lift our pelvis off the ground. So if where we're at is already enough, feel free to stay there. Inhale, kick the heels backwards, lift the knees. Draw belly button to spine, tongue to roof of mouth, and start to hover the pelvis into your forearm plank pose. Making sure we've not got any strain into the lower back. Lift the pelvis up in line with the shoulders. Keep your neck supported. For three, two, and one. Drop the pelvis. Ooh, untuck the toes. Make a pillow for your forehead and weight all the hips. We're going to take one more of those Ooh, just to make sure our shoulders are proper switched on. <laughs> Good, elbows in. Fingers facing forwards, almost like a, an 11 shape with the arms. Tuck the toes, press the heels backwards, so much so that your knees lift. Banders lock, diaphragm, uh, pelvic floor, diaphragm, tongue. Whoop, lift up the pelvis, hold this time for five. Switch on your glutes. Imagine there's a 50 pound note in between your butt cheeks and I'm gonna try and steal it <laughs> for three. Two, and one. Melt the hips, oh, untuck the toes, forehead onto hands. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Hands under shoulders, 
sit the hips back towards your heels. Oh, that was clicked in tandem then. <laughs> and then down dog when we feel ready. Making that downward facing V-like shape. Feet hip width apart, hands shoulder width apart. Soften the knees ever so slightly. Press the chest backwards and hug the rib cage in. Draw soft. Roll the lips. One more breath. Big exhale. Toes to touch. Sweep the right leg high, inhale breath. Exhale, step your right foot in between your hands. If it doesn't quite make it there, grab a hold of the ankle, step it forwards. Come up to fingertips, lengthen the chest. Shoulders rolling down and away from the ears. Keep your body at the same angle. Just reach your arms up in line with the ears, palms facing inwards. Rise to stand for five. Squeezing in the thighs, four, three, one, two, and one. Bend the back knee, tuck the hip bones under, whoop. Good, reaching the arms up tall. Breathe and hold. Circle the arms behind you, interlace your fingers. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Lift up the chest like we did our camel pose. Keep the lower body stable. As you exhale, extend the back leg, right shoulder dropping down to the inside edge of that right thigh, humble warrior. Gazing back to that left toe. Find a point of stillness. Good, keep sinking down into the hips as we reach the knuckles up and over, opening up through the front of the chest. If it feels a little bit wobbly today, drop that back knee, come to kneeling. Two more breaths, relax the jaw. One more inhale. And exhale, knuckles lift you all the way up and back. Release the grip of the hands, reach the arms high. <sighs> exhale, frame the right foot. Step lightly back, high plank position. Take a moment. Chaturanga, knees can drop. Bend the elbows into the ribs. Cobra or up dog, yogi's choice. Pubic bone, hip bones pressing to the floor as we open up the chest. Shoulders down away from ears. And exhale, downward facing dog. Take your time, there's like no rush. Toes touching. Inhale, left leg high. Curl knee to nose. Step the foot in between the hands. Come up to fingertips. Lengthen the chest, sink the hips just a little bit deeper. Good, body angle staying the same. Arms sweep up in line with the ears. Palms facing in, thumbs high. Count of five, rise to stand. Four. Three, two, one. Bend the back knee, tuck the hip bones, reset the arms. Circle the arms behind you, interlace non-dominant grip. So what that means is moving the fingers over one. <laughs> Press the knuckles down to that back heel, squeezing shoulder blades, open up the chest. And exhale, humble your warrior. Leaning forwards, sending the rib cage to the inside edge of that left thigh and dropping the gaze to the back right toe. If it feels wobbly, drop the knee, drop the ego. Allow yourself to be in a space that supports your body rather than feeling uncomfortable <laughs> or feeling defeated. Why not take the knee down? It feels comfy. You can always place a cushion under there or a towel. Do what works for you. One more breath in. And exhale. Knuckles lift us all the way up and back. High lunge or to your kneeling lunge. And exhale, frame the left foot. Step back, high plank. 
Vinyasa. Knees can stay lifted or drop them down though. Cobra or up dog. And the exhale, down dog. Lovely jubbly. Everybody come to all fours. Untuck the toes, sit your bum back towards your heels. If you need to, cushion or that brick underneath your bum once again. Okay, my lovelies. So, if you have a yoga block, you're gonna grab that. If you don't, grab a DVD or grab a book or something um, just a little bit thick and a little bit weighty. I'd like you to place it onto your head and find the point in which it balances. So not only do we have a beautiful fashion accessory, <laughs> we also have found the point in which we're gonna be balancing in our headstand. I've seen before headstands being done on the foreheads, but like we can't balance on our forehead unless we crank our neck. Mm -hmm. So we wanna keep whoop, the neck nice and supported. Oh. <laughs> and your brick on your head. Try not to slam your head in. It might take a little while. You might kind of do it forwards and backwards. But basically what we want to find is this alignment all the way oh, <laughs> through the spine. Okay, enough of that. Move the bricks off to one side. From here, grab opposite hand, opposite elbow, but don't forget about that space. Remember where your kind of your block uh, was on your head. Grab opposite hand, opposite elbow, place your elbows down to the floor. Keep your elbows exactly where they are, no moving please. Reach the hands forwards and interlace the fingers. So once you've found the interlace of your fingers, what you might notice is this little pinky finger underneath. Now if we keep this pinky finger on the ground, all that's going to happen is the other, what's that, mm, seven fingers are going to be squishing into that little guy. Like if you know, if you shake someone's hand and you've got rings on and they squeeze your fingers, it's that same thing, but in a headstand, which is already like crazy intense. So I want you to tuck whoop, your little pinky finger under, tuck it under, tuck it under. And that is going to just help your hands a lot for this space. So we've balanced the brick, grab opposite hand, opposite elbow, place your elbows down. Hands come forwards, interlace the finger, and then tuck that little pinky guy in. Now from this space, you'll see that you've got a nice little kind of cubby hole to plop your head into. Tuck the chin into the chest like we did in our humble warrior, looking back almost towards our knees. Where you had your brick is where your head is going to go down in between the hands, and I want you to really cup the back of your head. Now shoulders, notice my shoulders here, I've collapsed them down towards the ears. Roll your shoulders up and away from ears, so we're creating stability through the outside edge of the shoulder blade. Tuck the toes under, start to hover your knees just by maybe an inch or two. Squeeze the inner thighs, we're here for three. Press the elbows down to the floor for two. And one, drop the knees, untuck the toes, sit your bum towards your heels, uh, relax the arms. So one thing that's really important to note when we're working with our headstand, you are literally balancing pretty much your whole body's weight into three sections. One third being one forearm, the other third being the other forearm, and the other third being your neck. Okay, and our necks aren't used to holding our entire body weight. So it takes practice and patience to build up into this space. When you feel ready, opposite hand, opposite elbow, forearms are down. Reach the hands out in front of you, interlace fingers, tuck the little pinky guy under. Tuck the chin into chest, top of the head, head lands in between the hands and really make sure you're gripping onto your head. Press the forearms down, shoulders lifting away from ears, tuck the toes under, and this time we're going to straighten or hover the knees and then see if we can start to straighten the legs. Now, depending on your hamstring flexibility, it depends on how straight you're going to get your legs today. It doesn't matter really, but I want you to tippy toe your feet in as close towards you as you can. Now, you might start to notice that the shoulders collapse down and we feel a little bit more strain into the neck. If you notice that, start, walk your feet back, shoulders up and away from the ears is the place of safety for your neck and your throat. Mm -hmm. We don't want to collapse down into that space. 
From here, if it feels good, stay with it. If you're going a little bit further, squeeze one heel in towards your bottom. Hold for three, two, one. Place that foot down, switch it over, squeeze and hold. Shoulders away from ears for three, two, and one. Drop the foot, drop the knees. Child's pose. <sighs> Roll your head from side to side. Good. So again, we want to build up this posture day by day. There's no need to rush, to jump, or to, you know, force any pose in yoga. Build it up with awareness, build it up safely and calmly so that when we approach it, we're not kind of terrified and just springing into action. Yeah, we want to approach it with a calm state of mind. Once again, so uh, if either of the two options, hovering the knees or straightening up the legs and hugging one knee in, feel free to stay with those. If we're going a little bit further, find your setup, your little tripod, so elbows down, hands interlaced, tuck the pinky guy under, <laughs> chin to chest, drop the head, hands cupping the back of your head, your skull, your cranium, shoulders away from ears, tuck the toes, lift the knees, do, 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 tippy toe in and squeeze the heel to the bum. Now from this space, you're gonna look at your opposite foot. I want you to point your toes like mad until it starts to hover. So there is no jumping, no jumping. We do not jump onto our necks, okay? So take it slowly. Find the base, shoulders away from ears. Tuck the toes, lift the knees, tippy toe in, squeeze the heel into your bum, and then look at that other foot. Look at it, you know, like a, what's that film? Kill Bill, it's Kill Bill. You know when Kill Bill, when she looks at her toe and she's like, wiggle your big toe. That's what we need to do. <laughs> so we found our tripod, or our little headstand place, squeeze the knee in, and you're gonna wiggle that toe. And you're going to wiggle it so much that you start to point and then see if we can find that tipping action of lifting the hips. Now, when you find that space, don't freak out. See if you can squeeze that second heel in toward your bum. You're going to release the other foot and calmly drop the feet down to ground, bum to heels. <sighs> Child's pose. Have a little sway of the head from side to side. Just loosen up the neck. And actually, let's just take a little chill from our neck, wherever you are. Walk the hands back to the knees. And just give a little half circle rolls of the chin forwards. Now, I wouldn't suggest practicing headstands for like 10, 15 minutes at a time because, or unless you want a migraine or a headache. Yeah, when we're, again, when we're learning new postures and especially inversions, especially headstand. It's all about patience, yeah? Build up the strength in your neck, in the deep neck flexors, because most of the time we're sitting like this, yeah? We're not balancing the weight on our head. So it's gonna be a very different position to kind of find our headstand shape. But alas, if you have got to the point where you can hover both feet in and your knees are squeezing in towards your chest and you're like, F, what is next from this space? So from here, you're gonna take one foot and start to extend the leg. Now as you do this, the weight is gonna change because your pelvis is gonna tilt. So you wanna approach it really gently then squeeze that knee back in, and then the other side, slowly straightening up one leg, and it might, you know, fall a little bit backwards, so you're going to have to hug whoop, your abdominals, or you might kind of fall out of it because the legs are heavy, but when you get to the point in which one leg is high, really mindfully, Perhaps see if you can take the other leg high. Things that might happen is you might stick your bum out, which means your feet don't point high to sky. 
you might dip into the back and almost get a banana spine. We want to suck in the belly button to the back, squeeze the tailbone or your gluteus maximus, and see if we can find this stacking action from the heels to knees, knees to hips, hips to shoulders, shoulders to your head. Hug the knees in, slowly does it, release the feet. <sighs> and take a breather. Just know that these postures take time. There's no need to rush into anything. I've been practicing headstands since I was probably about four. <laughs> so, you know, how many, how many years is that? Um, 28. 24 years I've been doing a headstand. So, you know, if you're brand new to it, you've got 24 years. Take time. Okay, so if you're thinking, F, I can already do all these things and my headstand feels good and my neck feels safe and I'm not jumping onto my head, what can I do? Uh, what else can I do? So we're going a little bit further. Again, make that little cup shape, tuck the tail, uh, pinky finger, tuck the toes, lift the knees. So once you feel comfortable, you can start to play around with almost pressing or pressing into your headstand. So you're going to keep both legs straight, rise up high to tippy toes, Start to hover the feet and see if you can pike your way up to that space. Now, what might happen is, again, you're sinking into that lower back space. When we notice kind of the bum sticking backwards, we're going to squeeze the glutes, actively point the toes high to sky, shoulders lift up and away from the ears, and we're stabilizing through that mid-body area. And then when you want to slowly release, there's an action of sending your bum backwards to counterbalance the weight of the legs as they calmly, calmly come back down to the floor. You can take a few of those to lift up and lower down. But again, build it up over time. There's no need to overcomplicate things by rushing into it. Remember, breaks during your headstand practice is very required. Lovely. Walk the hands back towards the knees. Let's take just a stretch into the side of the neck. So that is a very quick introduction to your headstand or your sirasana. No jumping. No jumping into headstand, no hopping, no even tiny little hoppy jump. Stop it. You don't need to do a headstand that badly, right? <laughs> it's not worth it. Okay, let's get a little stretch on. Find your way into cross-legged or you can always uh, come to kneeling if that feels better. Right hand, oh, let's just relax the hands actually. You can drop your right ear down to your right shoulder and pull that left shoulder down and away. Good, closing down the eyes if it feels okay. If you want a little bit more, reach your right arm up and over. Lightly land your hand onto the side of the head. And just encourage, using the weight of your arm rather than like pulling on your neck, encourage the weight of the arm to just find a deeper stretch into that left side of the neck. A little bit more here, you're gonna extend your left arm over towards the side and actively pull the fingertips away from the shoulder. Breathe deeply for three. For two. And one. Switch over, release the hands, or oh, head into the center, and then that left ear over to left shoulder. Closing down the eyes. Left arm up and over. Just use that weight of the arm to your advantage. Right arm over to right side and extend the fingertips long. And the reach and almost like an imaginary pull. <laughs> For 
for three. For two. And one. Good, lift and release. Bring the palms to touch our heart center. Four hands onto the chest, one hand on top of the other. Bowing the chin forwards and just take a moment of stillness. Let go of the attachment to any of the poses that we took today. Practicing as always with our ahimsa, non-violence towards ourselves. Practicing devotion and tapas discipline. For the longevity of our body's health, rather than the desire of the ego and the aesthetics of the practice. Building a stable foundation for our practice strengthening up this connection to the internal space rather than flaunting on the external space. Good hands lift to the space in between the eyebrows, thumbs touching, third eye. Wisdom and intellect as always as we approach the asana practice. Exhale, to honor your time, patience, dedication. Jai. Thank you so much, lovely yogis. Hopefully that gave you a little insight into your Sarasana, your headstand pose. No jumping. <laughs> See you soon. Bye.